idealizing, devaluating, discarding, hoovering, and recycling begins again. Due to codependent behavior, denial, obsession, and addiction to sabotage, it is understandable how some find it very challenging to see the ultimate hidden agenda of narcissists. Okay, so that ultimate hidden agenda of narcissists can vary from one narcissist or cluster of personality to the next. So I'm not gonna touch that one in this video. I will say that due to codependent behavior, some who are romantically involved with narcissists and cluster of personalities, they are in denial. Sometimes they are obsessed and sometimes they are addicted to sabotage. Okay, that means they are addicted to emotional pain. The narcissist and cluster of personality, usually they are a codependent's best supplier when it comes to delivering emotional pain. One other thing that some who behave codependently do is when it comes to the narcissist and cluster of personality, they have what you call false assumptions. Okay, they, they think, for instance, they think that the narcissist and or cluster of personality can know exactly what they need in the romantic relationship. They, they should know what they want. And this doesn't help him or her. The narcissist and cluster of personality will take advantage of that. They will play as if they have no idea of what they're doing in the relationship to hurt their partners. In other words, they will shut down. This is often why some who behave codependently and who are involved romantically with narcissists and cluster of personalities, when they try to resolve issues in the relationship, nothing gets resolved because he or she is not being validated, nor are they being heard by the narcissist or cluster of personality. Let's move forward. Tool number one, take steps to remember that the narcissist is more than likely an imposter of those who are much better suited for you. Narcissists and cluster B personality types do not invest in healthy relationships, therefore engage in many toxic relationships that are more than likely very shallow and superficial. Okay, so narcissists and cluster B personalities, usually they do pass themselves off like someone else that they're not, they're like an imposter. So this person, I mean, right from the beginning, the relationship was pretty much a lie because the narcissist, first of all, has false self images. They're not going to show you who they really are. This usually comes later when the mask starts to slip off. This is usually when their false self images are threatened, if not challenged by you. And this can be intentionally or not intentionally. So take steps to remember that the narcissist more than likely is an imposter of a person who is much suited for you for romance, okay? They're, they're a lot better for you. So those who are more suited for you, you know, you can have a positive relationship with him or her. Whereas with the narcissist, the relationship at best is going to be dysfunctional. So just remember the narcissist is more than likely like an imposter of a person who is better suited for you when it comes to romantic relationships. Some narcissists and cluster of personalities, uh, you know, they are so good with mimicking others that some of their partners really think that the narcissist is a soulmate or a twin flame, whereas the narcissist has no interest in being anyone's soulmate, yet alone their twin flame. Narcissists often engage in dysfunctional and toxic relationships. They tend to be more superficial and shallow in nature. Next tool, build and work a support base in order to help you thrive past this very painful time. After the romance with the narcissist is over, understand that there may be times of sadness, anger, and confusion. Balance authenticity with positivity when you see and or hear things that are negative about you pertaining to the narcissist smear campaign. So more than likely the smear campaigning is coming. When the narcissist is love bombing the new supply, as I stated, very often the one who is being devalued, they're going to have the smear campaign done against him or her. The narcissist and cussing personality often likes to shake the confidence of the 
partner who is being devalued. This is often why some feel very jealous, if not envious, of the new supply. Some become so obsessed with the reality that the narcissist has new supply that he or she may start to show up at their job. They may go to their homes or their house or their apartment, their condo. They may begin to check out the new supply on social media. So when it turns into a bad romance, it can be a very dark time and it can be a very painful time. So make sure you have a support base in order to help you to thrive past that. The smear campaign more than likely is coming. This is not to discourage anyone watching this video. This is just something that usually happens. I just want to suggest to my stars especially to prepare yourself for this. One of the best ways that you can prepare for this is to have that support base. It is best to have a support base where you can constructively express what you are experiencing. You're going to have those times where you're going to feel some very unpleasant emotions such as sadness and anger. You may be in a state of confusion from time to time because the narcissist is starting to hoover you back in. First they love bomb, then they devalued, then they discarded in all to try to hoover you back in. So that's very confusing, especially when they have new supply. But as I stated, the new supply usually was around the narcissist for a little while. It's just that once you have been devalued and discarded, then the new supply was detected by you when all the while they probably were there in the narcissist's life. Final tool, celebrate your appealing traits while taking the time to get to know yourself better as a person. Understand that the narcissist mimicked you while creating a false identity or character of you in order to suit him or her when the dysfunctional relationship was active. Idealizing others in the beginning of the romance is what narcissists are notorious for. Okay, so as I stated before, the idealization happens very early on in the game. The narcissist puts on all the charm, the seduction, and the swagger that he or she can muster up. They're trying to reel you in. The narcissist has to entice the new target, okay, or the new supply. When they mimic you, nine times out of ten chances, they're going to behave like you in order to attract the new supply. Okay, I get it. It sounds disgusting, okay? But just think about it for a minute. You have a lot of appealing traits. The narcissist and cluster personality sees that they have to start acting like you. I want to share a secret with you. This is the number one reason why they kept you around for so long. It wasn't their swagger. It wasn't the house. It wasn't the car. It wasn't the money. And it wasn't anything else. Okay? What they showed you was you. Okay? Let that one sink in for a minute. All of your appealing traits. The narcissist mimicked you hijacked your identity and presented you to you. So every time the narcissist and cluster of your personality was charming, they were pleasant, and you felt like you were loved, you were loving yourself. It was just being portrayed to you via the narcissist and cluster of your personality. In other words, they were behaving like you in order to keep you trapped. Some of you may have thought and felt that when the narcissist came around, the cluster of personality came around, that you met finally Miss Wright or Mr. Wright, when actually they had mimicked you so well, they presented you to you, and they manipulated you into thinking that everything that you love and you like about them belongs to them when actually it's your appealing traits that they mirrored back to you. Think of how a predator studies the prey. They figure out what trap to use in order to bait and ensnare the targeted prey. Narcissists often, they go about the romantic situation the same way. They study, they study the prey. They mimic him or her. And then when they go on to new supply, they behave like you in order to attract the new supply. 
because if their mask slips off right out the gate, they're not going to seem to have anything appealing about him or her to keep anyone around, let alone attract them. Narcissists often recycle romantic partners. One of the ways that they are successful is to engage in the diabolical tactic that I just described. They mimic and hijack the appealing traits or identities of their current romantic partners. So when they go out and try to find new partners or new supply, they behave like you or all of their other romantic partners who have appealing traits. Narcissists and clustering personalities have a predatory nature. That alone should let you know that they're not very pleasant people or have very pleasant appealing traits. The clustering personalities, they were false. They were phonies. They were like imposters right from the beginning. That was their main game. Okay, and unfortunately, a lot of us, we overlook that particular diabolical tactic. And that is how they mimic us so well that they show us our appealing traits. And we think it's them and it's us. Trauma bonding is when people misuse sexual feelings, excitement, and fear to entangle another person to him or her. Many narcissists and those with a cluzzy personality like to bind people to them without connecting deeply or in a meaningful way to others. So on one hand, the narcissist likes to bind people to him or her. On the other, they want to keep them at a distance. They only want the narcissistic supply. Trauma bonding is possible when people misuse sexual feelings and excitement and fear to entangle another person to him or her. Trauma bonding can occur when there are romantic partners in a codependent relationship consisting of narcissists, empaths, and codependents. There are many codependent dysfunctional romantic relationships that are rooted in childhood trauma. Next point. It is natural to bond with others that we spend a lot of time with, regardless if the relationship is dysfunctional or not. Energy transference can influence a more potent bonding to take place between people regardless of how toxic the relationship may be. Energy transference is something that is involuntary or is a natural occurrence that happens between people when they interact with one another. Energy transference, again, is involuntary. It cannot be avoided. It cannot be helped. Usually when we try to avoid energy transference, we may run into some problems. But energy transference is something that is a natural occurrence. Let's move forward. The narcissistic partner more than likely will have many things about him or her that is familiar, but not necessarily in a positive way. Narcissistic spouses and partners usually have similar characteristics as narcissistic parents. So this is a pattern that a person may usually run into, and that is a lot of their spouses, a lot of their romantic partners have the same characteristics as a narcissistic parent and or grandparents. Due to the way our subconscious mind functions, we gravitate towards all that is familiar, whether it is positive or negative. Therefore, narcissists tend to hold a strange and strong appeal for those who have unresolved childhood trauma and vice versa. Very often, many of us go from one romantic relationship to the next without taking time out to release toxic energy that was accumulated during the dysfunctional romance with an ex. Narcissists like to recycle their romantic partnerships. Therefore, the vicious cycle of dysfunction seems infinite. Next point. As long as the low energy cycle remains, the narcissistic exes can continue to feed long after the physical aspect of the dysfunctional relationship has ended. This is another sign of being trauma bonded to a narcissist and or a cluster B personality.